Okay, folks, I've got uh, the Rad Runner original and the Rad Runner Plus here side by side. Um, I'm not a professional reviewer. I don't do fancy edits. I don't have any affiliate links or sponsorships, but I bought these two bikes and I watched a lot of videos and I kind of wish that uh, somebody had made this video before I bought these bikes. So I figured I would make it and maybe it'll help somebody else out. Um, so if you're watching this, you've probably already watched about 30 other videos. So I'm not going to talk about box unboxing and features and all of that stuff. You probably know the basics. Um, but I just wanted to cover a few things that might help some folks out. Um, so I ordered these both about five, six weeks ago. The green one here showed up in about two weeks. I've had it for, you know, three, four weeks, gotten to ride it a bit. The silver one just showed up yesterday, um, supply chain issues and all that. Uh, so I just put it together today and did a six mile, uh, first ride on it. And, um, wanted to give some thoughts on it while it's all still fresh in my head. Um, you've seen the unboxing and the assembly. There's the box. One thing I wish Rad did differently is packaging. It's very well packaged for damage. The box had some big scuffs on it and a couple holes and the bike was fine. But this trash bag, this contractor bag, is just foam, plastic, single-use stuff that I have to throw away. Um, I'd like to see them do something a little more recyclable, some kind of crushed paper or something. I don't know. Seems like they could do a little better with that. <clears throat> um, this is the uh, the Rad Plus. Of course, this is the original Rad Runner. Um, one thing you'll notice, I don't have a seat in there right now. Everyone else has called out Rad for putting absolute garbage seats on bikes they ship, and I am no different. Um, you know, I've been riding that fixed gear bike over there for the last 20 years. I ride a lot. Um, the saddles they ship with are absolute trash and they should be ashamed. Um, and they ship them with this seat post that's designed in such a way that you can't even reuse it. So you have to not only buy a new saddle, you have to buy a new seat. Um, so I have the two saddles here. Uh, I'll see if I can give them away or sell them on eBay or something. Um, I'll never sit on them. Um, I got this uh, Uno advanced project thing on Amazon for about 35 bucks. It's actually a pretty good uh, seat post. I've been happy with it. Um, it does have a little give to it. I don't know if you can see me pushing down on it there. And then this saddle is a Bontrage uh, commuter comfort version that I picked up at REI. I think it was 50 bucks. So, you know, with tax, I think I'm up to 90 bucks, which is a, almost 10% of the cost of one of the, of this, of the original one. Um, and I got to buy two of those, so there's another 180 bucks. Um, so that was, that's, that's an annoyance, uh, something they could definitely improve on. Um, but that's, that's pretty much the only real major flaw that I've found in these bikes so far. Um, so I'll just go over them, you know, the, obviously the big difference is the appearance. I really like the way the green one looks a lot better. I think it's kind of slick. Silver one's kind of boring. Um, but if I was uh, going to advise you on, like, which one to buy, um, I would say, you know, this green one is, I think, $600 cheaper. Um, it's a single speed. You know, it comes with the very basic controller, um, no fenders, and uh, no rear seat package. Um, you know, you may not care about the rear seat package. <clears throat> I, as you can see, have a, a toddler. We have a three-year-old. So I figured part of the logic with buying these two was that I can put him in the orange seat here, the easy, uh, the, the Yep Maxi, um, which is also the easy fit, <coughs> excuse me, which is very important uh, to know because we bought the wrong one first. This is not really Rad's fault. Yep makes two identical seats. It's the same seat with two di completely different ways to attach them to the bike. One is a seat post mount. And the other one is this easy fit mount. And it's not clear on the packaging. It's also not clear um, from Rad's website that you need to just buy the easy fit one. Um, so if you're looking at the orange or blue one and it's $249.95, that's the one you want. If you see one that's $279.95, don't get that one. It's the one that comes with a seat post mount. Um, I just put this thing on this weekend. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. Um, I didn't see a lot of other videos on this, so you you release it like this, and it just lifts out. And that little square there is built to hold this. If you were putting it on any other rack, uh, Thule makes you buy another $50 attachment that attaches to your rack, but Rad just has that built to accept it. So you can see that little thing in the front there just 
clips on and you, you click it back down. Um, it's hard to do one-handed. And then you just spin the thing until it clicks. There you go. And then there is actually a little lock there too, so no one can steal it off your bike. Uh, this front strap just loops around the seat post and goes in there for security. Of course, I have the seat out. Um, and uh, it's, a good little, it's a good little carrier. One thing I didn't uh, think through when I got this is I had bought a collapsing uh, wire rack for 30 bucks that I had just zip tied on here. It worked great. Um, it does not appear that any kind of pannier or rack system or indeed a bike lock mounting system is compatible with this thing. So <clears throat> fortunately the uh, Rad Runner comes with, you know, you can get the front basket or the front tray. You can also get the um, kind of uh, saddlebag, no, not saddlebag, the, uh, whatever they call it, a trunk compartment that goes in the middle here. Um, given that with a kid on the back, you don't want to be kicking him in the face. Uh, so you want to step through. I'm going to go on this bike with a front basket. And then on this other bike, um, when the kid gets to be another year or two older, he's probably going to sit back here and hold on. Um, this one, I'm going to uh, put the, the center console in um, because there is no good way to attach a pannier system underneath this seat. Um, I could take the seat off, but it seems like some work. Um, you have to figure out what to do with the lock. The lock will probably just go in that thing right now. Just have it bungeed on there. A um, couple details like that, they could have worked out better. Like, there should be a place to, to attach a big, beefy lock. Um, you know, stuff like that. But some differences between the bikes. Um, obviously, the colors. Um, this, uh, the Plus comes with this upgraded controller. It comes with this uh, upgraded front light, which is not compatible with the front racks, weirdly. It comes with fenders. Uh, it comes with... The seat package with the seat pegs already pre-installed <clears throat> and um, also it comes with these uh, shock absorbing front fork. Um, I think that's the differences plus these leather you know, vinyl leather look grips. Oh and of course the shifting. Um, so for 600 bucks that's what you get. Is it worth it? Uh, you know I've been riding this bike. I've probably got 70 miles on the bike this month. been riding it almost every day. It's fun. I've enjoyed it. I get a lot of compliments on it and comments. I rode this bike six miles today, and I don't want to ride this bike again. <clears throat> um, I, I, I kind of wish I had just bought two of the more expensive ones. I'm not going to lie. Um, you know, this is, I live in Boston. We have hills. The streets are kind of bumpy. Um, you know, I've been riding my Fixie around for 20 years, and I'm used to, that was one of the reasons I wanted to upgrade, is I was kind of getting sick of getting beat up. On the, on the bumps and all of that stuff and, and struggling with the hills on a fixed gear. And rather than just going to like a commuter bike for the same money, I figured I'd try this e-bike thing. And it's been a lot of fun. Um, but if you live in a city like me, and you know, an East Coast city with hills and bumps, uh, the gearing on this, and I didn't really want gearing after all those years riding a fixed gear, uh, it makes a big difference. These bikes are heavy. And they, even with the, uh, with the throttle... Um, they struggle going up some of the steeper hills. Um, so that alone, if you have any kind of hills in your town, is worth it. Um, I would also say the fenders. The first day I rode this thing, it's been a wet summer here in Boston. Um, I rode, like, there was a flat rail trail. I was out in Connecticut. Beautiful flat spot. Um, probably did 25 miles on the bike. It was a great ride, but there was puddles everywhere, and I got soaked front and back with spray. Um, so I have actually got the fenders in my basket. I'm going to buy those. Uh, they're essential. It's annoying that they're 80 bucks because they're just cheap plastic fenders. Um, but they're sized to fit it. They come with the right hardware and it's worth it. Um, this computer is also night and day better. That's a $99 upgrade on their website. That's also annoying. It shouldn't cost that much. Um, but it is what it is. Um, that's actually sold out. I will eventually upgrade, um, both because the computer itself is much better and easier to control, but also you get the ability to bypass the speed limit of 32 kilometers an hour and go up to 40. Um, and, you know, if you just want to get somewhere, that 20% speed difference or whatever it is, you know, four miles an hour actually makes a difference. Um, you can really tell. It, it feels a lot faster than this one. Um, so, plus the, the computer's nicer. It comes with an odometer, and it comes with a speedometer, and, uh, you know, you can tell how much wattage you're using. It's just a better system all around, and it's a weird corner that they cut. Um, but it is what it is. The seat, 
you know, that's up to you. I don't know. Not everyone wants the back seat. I don't necessarily need it right now. My kid will probably use it sometimes in the future because we have it, but it's not like one of the main selling points for me. Um, but I will say the, uh, and, and the same with the light. I haven't had a chance to try it out at night. It's okay. Um, but the fenders, the gearing, and the computer, and also the, uh, the front suspension, um, just a much, much more comfortable bike to ride on the bumps. Uh, so I would say if you have, you know, if it's in your budget and you have any kind of concerns, like should I buy the cheaper one, should I buy the more expensive one, buy the more expensive one. Um, absolutely. Don't, no, no questions asked. Um, now, the other side is if you live, if you're in Florida, you ride on the beach, it's flat everywhere and your roads are perfect, you may not need all that stuff. Uh, you might not need the gears. Um, you know, the fenders are still nice, but those are a cheap add-on. You, you might not care to upgrade the little computer, um, especially if this is just going to be sort of a beach cruisery thing for you. So, you know, if you're in that kind of situation, you don't have hills, you have good roads, um, and you don't want to carry a passenger, and so you don't care about getting that add-on for free, um, you don't care about the fenders, this might be the right bike for you. If I live somewhere place like that, I think I would probably keep, keep up with the green one. I really like the way the green one looks. I think it looks a lot nicer. Um, but what can you do? So there's my quick review of these two bikes. I hope that helps somebody out there. Um, I've enjoyed both of them. The, uh, silver one, my wife and I are going to fight over and whoever loses the fight, will get to ride the green one around. Um, so it is, uh, they're both great, uh, different use cases though. Uh, if you're certainly like me, go with the silver one. All right.